Let's talk about stitching. Um, I stake no claim to this technique. In fact, to this day, I've never invented any technique specifically on my own. This technique has been around for decades. I first learned this technique back in like 1990 or 1991 on Lake Paris in Moreno Valley, California by an old timer that was just happy to let me get on the boat with him. Um, basically, I've modified uh, just the setup, but not the actual technique itself. I use a spinning rod, the longest one that you're comfortable with fishing. Um, I use 20 to 30 pound braid, um, eight stranded with a six to eight foot, uh, eight pound fluorocarbon leader. Um, basically, it's just a small one or two watt worm hook with a small straight tail worm. Uh, you don't want a hook tail or a paddle tail, anything with uh, too much pizzazz to it or too much uh, water vibration. It's a very subtle, easy technique. Um, 12 to 18 inches above the hook, you want a split shot. You want the lightest split shot that you can use to effectively fish the technique. So if the water is very still, obviously you can go with a much lighter split shot. Um, basically what proves this technique um, to work so well is the amount, um, the speed at which you fish it. Cast it out there, let it sink to the bottom. The most important part to this technique is the hand movement. The hand movement goes like this. Once it hits the bottom, you can stretch your line a little bit, pinch your line, reach forward with your finger, and bring your hand back, and then repinch. You reach your fingers forward, repinch. You do that three times, and then you reel up your slack. The reason why the hand movement is so important with this technique is because it causes you to painfully slowly work this bait. It is something that, yes, you could do it with just the reel. Yes, you could do it with just a lift of the rod. But the hand technique itself causes you to maintain a very slow, very methodic presentation. Something else this technique will do will cause you to learn how to watch your line. If you are extremely lucky, you'll feel a very light tap on the end of your line, which is the bite. Most of the time, what you'll end up getting is a loop or slack in the line, or you'll see your line move to the left or to the right, or you'll get very slow tension put on your line. Those are all bites that you're getting without actually feeling what's going on. Uh, once that happens, regardless of whether you have slack in your line or not, you want to take the tip of the rod, which you have pointed down at the actual bait, and lift it straight up. That's how you're setting your hook. That's how you're keeping the tension on your fish to catch it. Um, it's a very simple technique. It's a very old technique. Uh, you want to use a four to six inch straight tail worm something like a robo worm or even a trick worm would work great. Um, it works great in the springtime with a floating worm. It, it's an awesome technique. It has its place um, and you can catch anything from a half pound 10 incher to a five and a half pounder that I've caught on this very technique. The key to using this technique is the hand movements and the speed at which you fish it. Stick to the hand movements, stick to the methodical slow pace of this bait, and you'll get bit all day long. Um, tight lines to everybody. Uh, do me a favor and hit that like button and rip some lips. Good luck.